Are you a graduating animation student or a student leaving school to pursue work within the industry? What are the things to expect when you do land a gig within the industry? And maybe not knowing what to expect from the industry gives you a little bit of anxiety. Here are some of my top advices for those individuals pursuing work within the industry. Hey guys, it's Sinika Pantoa and today I'd like to give my advice for students going into the industry. So these are students who are just graduating from school or students who are leaving school to pursue actual work within the industry. Or in some cases, leaving their home to live in Los Angeles where most of the industry scene is. But in this video, I want to talk about things to expect or things to prepare yourself so you can protect yourself from the hardships of the industry. There's a lot of students coming into the industry where they have this sort of expectation in what the studio life or what the industry will grant them. And when things don't work out their way, they get really jaded, they wanna quit the industry, and they become bitter about it. Going to school in CalArts, where we're very close to the industry, we already had these expectations because the teachers there actually had experiences, both old and recent, within the industry and would tell us these stories and cautionary tales to watch out for when entering the industry. But there are those out there who don't really know what to expect and when it hits them, it hits them hard. So I'd like to talk about my top advices I have for those people coming into the industry scene. Number one, don't expect the company or studio that hires you to be your family. There are many studios out there that loosely use the word family. You're part of the A family, welcome to the A family. You're part of that studio family. The problem I have with studios calling their employees family is that a lot of these employees will take it to heart that they are their sole happiness, their place of belonging, etc. Now this may be a cynical or pessimistic point of view that I have, but I don't take the word family very lightly. So when a studio lets you go, for example, would you still consider them your family? Would they still consider you as family? Or because you're not working for them, you're not part of that family anymore? My feelings for family is that they'll try their best to be there for you, even though the circumstances are rough. So when someone who's worked in a studio for 20 plus years and they get let go, it's heartbreaking to them because they treated that studio as their family. The way I personally see studios is that their relationships, things either work out or things don't work out. You give something and they give something in return. That relationship can be long-term, it can last for a really long time, or it can be short-term, it could just be a fling. So when I think about studio work like that, I can find values within myself that make me appreciate myself more without the dependency of a studio. So just don't base all your happiness on this one studio and just treat it as business, as a relationship. Number two, don't expect leading roles to be handed to you like you deserve it. Now, whether you deserve a leading role or not, that's not really the point I'm trying to make here. The point I'm trying to make here is that normally you don't get those leading roles as soon as you leave school. You would usually start off as a trainee, an apprentice, or an entry-level position when it comes to the industry. And eventually you prove yourself and you eventually become a normal workforce within the industry. Either you stay in this realm or you start moving up in the ranks and become a lead or director or whatnot for a project. But it's not normal that you're handed leading roles just because you feel like you deserve it. And your fellow co-workers may have a lot more experience to you and are more capable than you are in leading a project because they have that experience within the industry. So my advice would just to keep working, to just keep improving, and don't worry too much about those lead roles. If you feel like you're not being heard, well, start working on personal projects where you have full control over that and you have a voice for it. Number three, don't expect studios to run the way you want them to. And this is a problem that I see a lot of students face when they come into the industry. So imagine a student that just got hired at a studio that does a lot of family-oriented animated flicks. And that student is really bummed out and really angry that the studio isn't doing any mature or adult-oriented animation-related stuff. Maybe that student is really bummed out that they aren't doing 2D feature films. One thing I learned about studios ever since I started working is that they maintain a brand or an image that they want to have within the populace. So if a family wants to watch top quality animation with a great story, they'd probably watch a release from Disney because they're known for releasing films in that quality. But imagine if they just release a hardcore adult material. That would alienate the whole crowd and would mess up their brand or their image. I see a lot of students ranting about the state of the industry or why the industry isn't doing the things that they want to do. And to be fair, I'm just like that too. I still am. But it's a lot more complex than that that covers a lot of departments that's outside of our discipline. 
So if you get hired into the studio, deliver good work, contribute new ideas, Explore new ideas, but just don't combat the studio for not doing the things that you want to do. I do feel that people within the studio should challenge the studio that they work for to explore new territory, but don't be bummed about it if it doesn't happen overnight. And if you still feel yourself really unhappy with the studio because of the work that they're doing that you're not a fan of, then there are other studios out there that fit closely to your aesthetics. Number four, don't be precious about the work you do for a studio. If you've heard the term or expression, kill your babies, then I'm sure you're familiar with this, especially if you come from an art school or an animation school. You probably have a good idea of what that's all about. But for those who don't know, it's when you're really precious about the work you do, the work you make, you're really passionate about it, you love it, and maybe it's just you. When I do work for a client or a studio, I would show them a first pass and they would give me notes where I'd have to change everything I did from the ground up. Even if my first pass or my first take on something is my absolute favorite, it doesn't really matter to the client or the studio. If I'm being paid to adjust notes and make changes, then I have to do that, regardless of whether I think it's better or worse. I will try to justify my notes and make my decision sound, but if it still doesn't register to them, then I still have to adjust their notes. A lot of entry-level employees, especially from those who just graduated or left school, get really bitter about this when their work isn't really appreciated. So they feel like the production isn't really hearing them or appreciating them. One thing you also have to know is that it is all about collaboration. It's all about working for a final product. And things like these should not be taken personally. But the thing is, a lot of these people do take it personally. So my advice is just to not take things personally, treat it as business, treat it professionally, and remind yourself that you're all in this together. Number five, it isn't about grades anymore. Memorize how to draw the human head using the Loomis method? So what, who gives? Memorize all the Latin names for the muscles? Who gives a damn? You can draw a whole figure without doing any underdrawing or shorthand? Wow, good for you. There are a lot of rules that teachers and schools have made for their students when they do their assignments. But those are just things that the school can give you a score if you pass or fail something. In a production workflow, there are style guides for you to hit a certain style to make everything consistent with the project. People may utilize shortcuts that may seem like cheating for students, such as altering a color of an image just using sliders and adjustment layers, instead of trying to hand paint everything with decisive color making skills. If it gets a job done, it gets a job done. What may seem like cheating is just working smarter. However, there is a difference between cheating and stealing. And that's something I'll have to talk about in another video. Number six, learn communication and teamwork skills. You're not just yourself anymore. You're not just doing it for your own grades. You're also now doing it for a team, a studio, or a whole production. If you're doing work that may be problematic to the whole production, it'll affect the whole production. So for example, if you start drawing the characters in your own style and not being consistent with the style for the actual product, it's gonna lead to people having to redo the work that you did just to make everything consistent. You also have to learn how to talk with your teammates, how to get in the same boat, the same mindset, and find solutions that make all of you work together in harmony. I remember when I was a student at school, there were a lot of egos. There were a lot of people who had strong opinions about the industry and thought they were top guns. But that really gets you nowhere, especially when you're in a team. So you have to make sure everyone's on the same boat, everyone's giving their best, and you all respect each other. Remember, teamwork operations is where you build reputation. If your teammates had a delight working with you, then you're going to build a good reputation when you do look for future work. And I feel like having a good reputation is so much better than just having a huge social media following. Number seven, start learning about the art of negotiation. Something I wish that a lot of art schools or animation schools did is that they taught students the business side of things. A lot of students pay huge money just to learn the craft of the art making, but I feel like they want to make that money back. And to make that money back, they have to learn how to run businesses. They also have to learn the art of negotiation. So this is where you have to do your research, consult your friends, consult people out there, get some advice from people you admire, how they started out and how they started negotiating their rates. If you're going to the animation industry in LA, a lot of the studios are part of the animation guild. One of the reasons why the guild was made was to protect the workers working within the animation industry, whether it's fair pay, abuse in the workplace, fair treatment. However, this mostly just applies to people working in the industry in Los Angeles, California, one of the most expensive places to live in within the world. And in their website, they do provide a list of how much you should be at least making for a studio that is part of the union. So that means 
mostly major animation studios within Los Angeles are part of the Animation Guild. But even if you're not part of the Animation Guild or working for something that is part of the Animation Guild, you should be okay for asking for higher pay. It never hurts to ask for higher pay. And usually the people that are trying to hire you will do counter offers. And you guys start negotiating until you reach a deal that fits well for you. But you should also consider that it's not just about the money, it's also about the work hours, the work you're doing, what's expected out of you. Ask what their overtime pay situation is like. Is the contract based on how long you're working for the company or is it based per project or is it based at will? Are you getting paid hourly, weekly, bi-weekly? Are there other benefits such as royalties, bonuses, healthcare, gas and communal services? When are you expected to be paid? These are things you want to start thinking about and things you want to be on top of so you guys don't get duped or taken advantage of for your work. Now, negotiation is different for everyone. Some people fight for longer employment. Some people will fight for higher pay. It's really entirely up to you, but shoot for higher standards for yourself and be proud of the work that you can contribute and why they want to hire you in the first place. Start thinking about yourself as a business. So the thing within the industry, especially in animation, is that it's super competitive. There's a lot of story artists, there's a lot of animators who can do almost the same things that you can do, but what makes you stand out? And maybe it's beyond a position. What makes you stand out where you can survive on your own? Maybe you want to do a comic. Maybe you want to go into more personal project related stuff. Maybe you want to brand merchandise, whatever it is. Start thinking about that stuff so you find worth in your own work rather than what the studio expects you to do. Deliver something that only you can deliver and no one else can. Number eight, if you're on a visa, start on projects where you have sole responsibilities for. As a visa holder myself, reputation about your work and yourself is crucial when it comes to visa applications. I had classmates that were just as international as I was, they were on visas, but they did nothing but party and they didn't really do any work that makes them shine within their career. The student films I did at school, I made them my personal projects, I directed them, I animated them, I submitted them to film festivals, they got recognition, one of them ended up being nominated for the Annie Awards. Reputation like that can help build your visa case when you do apply for a visa that allows you to stay within the country. Visas are getting harder and harder to get. Work visas, that's not a guarantee. Visas like the O-1, the Extraordinary Ability for America, shows that you're capable and that you stand out in your career to obtain this visa. If you feel like you want to live in a country that's not of your birthplace and you want to get and you want to gain permanent residency throughout your career and your reputation with that career, think about your personal projects to use as a leading role. Some other people are more fortunate where they can gain leading roles in a project within a studio that can help them get that permanent residency or that permanent visa. So if you're doing it for visa reasons, use your talents for that to get that permanent residency. Last but not least, keep learning and studying. Just because you graduated from school, that doesn't mean that you know everything already. You know how to animate, you know how to paint, whatever. Nowadays, I study anatomy, I study anime, something that I wish that I studied more during school. I've been trying to be more comfortable with painting. I've been taking classes here and there. What I love about this career is that it is a lifelong opportunity of learning. There's a lot of things about animation that I love and I wanna learn that too. But in order to do that, either I have to get involved in those projects or I have to do self-studying or join classes where I can gain that knowledge to prepare myself for those tasks up ahead. School didn't really teach me everything. I learned a lot from school, but I didn't learn everything that I wanted to know. So I have to make the effort not depend on my teachers to give me that information and research and find classes and teachers that do teach the things that I personally want to learn. There are students who graduate and when they start in the industry, they screw up because they were not prepared for the industry work and then they end up blaming their school for not teaching them the skills that they needed to know. While that sort of stuff can be justified, the biggest fault here in the room is really the student. If they really wanted to master anatomy, they would have gone to extracurricular classes or gone to workshops where they really did in-depth studies of anatomy, for example. However, even as a full-time employee, even if you're working in the studio, you should still be open to learning new things. And you should keep practicing, you should break out of your comfort zone so you can grow as an artist. Your journey of learning does not stop once you graduated. So if you're working on a project, find opportunities where you can really challenge yourself. And if you feel really ballsy, maybe you can ask a production lead to give you those challenging scenes 
with the intention of improving. Anyways, those are my top advices I'd like to give for students who are graduating, who are leaving school, who are just entering the industry as brand new employees. If there are things that I missed out or things that you wanted to know as a student who was entering the industry or trying to get into the industry, let me know down below in the comment section. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.